The Blackfoot South State Mental Hospital in Blackfoot, Idaho, has a very dark and very spooky past. Join us today and learn more about the State Mental Hospital. Everybody, this is Colleen with Speaking of Spirits, and today I've got my sidekick, Katie. Hi. And uh, Tim and Mark are out doing stuff, so we decided we went ahead without them. It's Girls' Day. Girls' Day. <laughs> and we are going to talk about Blackfoot South. Yes. And if you um, don't know Blackfoot South, it is the state, is it a, like a mental hospital? Yeah, so it's one of, I believe, three now in Idaho. Ours is for the south uh, eastern region, and it's ours is has a lot of different parts to it. So it is like an inpatient mental health facility. They do geriatric care. They do um, minors who are suicidal, and then they do um, criminally insane, which Ooh, Idaho doesn't yeah. really do criminally insane, mm-hmm. but people that are not yet deemed fit for trial, wait there and undergo treatment until oh yeah they're ready to go. Lori Vallow was there. Oh. Yes. So we don't have, when you said we don't have the criminally insane, so that's, right. you can't, in Idaho, you can't, you can't claim insanity to get out of a criminal mm-hmm. uh, charge. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, like murder, you can't claim in, insanity. Mm-hmm. They, there doesn't exist in Idaho. They said, nope. <laughs> yep. So yep. that's what you're talking about. Yeah. So, so they have to go to a mental hospital? Yep. They deem you incompetent um, to undergo trial and you will undergo treatment. And some people, you might undergo treatment for the rest of your life and never go to trial, but you'll never be out free. Oh, that's so, nuts. That's that's nuts. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So it is, um, you know, there are individuals in there who are dangerous, some because they are criminal, um, and some just have um, mental illnesses that don't respond to treatment. And then you just have geriatric care and things like that. So um, yeah, uh, it's an interesting place. So what's the history? When was it built? So... Um, <clears throat> We did a little bit of history, by the way, on our Idaho haunts, because this is my favorite Idaho haunt in Idaho. Um, So it was built in um, 1886, uh, four years before Idaho was granted statehood. And it actually was, um, at that time, the insane asylum was for criminals only. So they had criminals from Oregon um, shipped down. Um, So yeah, um, ours was the first state hospital, which is really cool. Um, the sad thing is, is that, um, other than criminally insane, families could just drop family members off at the hospital, um, and roll out. So you had people, um, that sometimes you had women that their families didn't want to care from them for them. They weren't married. They were, um, oh, <clears throat> not ladylike, if you know what I mean? Oh, they had their man. own opinions. So they got shipped off um, to the hospital, which is pretty sad. That is sad. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Anyway, yeah, it was the first one, and the first building actually burnt down in a fire in 1889, um, and it was just the one building at that time, and uh, there were 47 males and 20 female patients at the time. Early accounts said seven patients, so five men and two women, were missing afterwards with two bodies found in the ruins, but later they said that nobody was killed in the fire, but there's never a record either way. How many? 
uh, seven total that were disappeared um, in the fire. So who knows if they escaped? Um, they said two bodies were found um, in the ruins, which is unfortunate too, though, because that could have been anyone. It could have been a worker. It could have been, you know, an inmate as they were called at the time. But also the conditions were so bad. It could have been a body. It's somebody that had already died. You know, that's half the times they just left them. That's terrible. Yeah. So the treatment was not great at the time. Um, even now, um, there's an account of a psychiatric nursing student a couple of years back that did um, like their clinics over there. And it's just, it's, it's hard. The conditions aren't great because the patients are dangerous to themselves and others. Mm-hmm. So it's essentially looks like a jail inside um, if you've ever been in there. But um, anyway, um, I wanted to share a really cool story um, about a woman named Maggie Hardy or Margaret Hardy. Um, and she, <laughs> I love her. She's crazy, but I love her. So her first, Latah County, which I don't even know where that is around. Is that up by? I don't know. Um, I mean, look. Boise? Who? What is it called? Latah County. Where is it? Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah. L-A-T-A-H. I am not. I will find out originally. for us and our guests. Yes. I'm not originally from Idaho, so I don't know all the counties. Neither am I, so it's really hard for me to. Oh. It's like. Is that by Boise then? Uh, it took us let's over see. There. Located in the north central region of the of Idaho. So, the, oh, Moscow. Oh. The county seat is Moscow. Okay. And not Russia. Moscow, Idaho, for those of you who are not from Idaho. <laughs> Frozen, just like Russia, though. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's where um, the first murder case was. Um, back in 1895 is when that murder case showed up in the papers. And um, Maggie Hardy, they called her Old Woman Hardy. Um, and they somebody called her a black-hearted old hag <laughs> by the newspaper. <laughs> Uh, would soon enough be the only woman in the Idaho State Penitentiary, which is the old prison. In Boise. Boise. So that's where she started out. Um, She had an infamous past. She lived in Utah, Colorado, Oregon, and then moved to Idaho. Um, She was known for prostitutions, theft, running bordellos. Oh, girl, had it going on. Yes, she was a wild woman, which I love. However... Um, she got a little crazy. Um, so she was charged with despoiling the golden hair of a seven-year-old girl by cutting it off and eventually fell into morphine addiction. Um, So wait a minute. Despoiling the hair? Yes. Yes. That's a criminal charge, cutting off the hair. I guess that's assault It's assault now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and, and back then the length of your hair as a woman determined how pure you were. Oh, it was well. (laughs) Y'all. <laughs> Colleen, she's getting crazy over there. Oh, boy. Um, Her hair is really long, by the way. I'm so pure. I'm so innocent. I've never, ever done anything. Here's a virgin. Um, yeah, so that was her first um, in Aspen. Um, so she was eventually sent to an institution, first in Oregon. Um, and they called her. They said she's cured. They released her. And here's where her... It gets kind of crazy. So she went back to an asylum after a suicide attempt. Um, mm -hmm. Then she moved to Moscow. Um, So she was addicted to morphine, though, when she she, went in. Yep. So she was sent to the asylum due to morphine addiction. Well, now, y'all know that morphine was like in everything Mm -hmm. back then, right? So Mm -hmm. cough syrup was morphine. Mm -hmm. Um, Excuse me. They have... Like, I found all these little bottles in Pennsylvania where I lived. Oh, that's right. Yeah, like on the farm. And little bottles, and they were, they're morphine. If you if you look at the history, like they have um, imprinted on the glass, the cure-alls yeah, and yeah. stuff. It was all morphine. Like, how yeah. cool is that? Everybody was addicted to morphine. Yes, it really was it a really wild was. time. It yeah. was. And that's the thing is, it was a cure-all. You just, anything happened, you just popped it. And low-key... Everyone was addicted to morphine. Everyone was. I'm telling you. (sighs) So what a time to be alive. Yeah, exactly. And that's the (laughs) thing is like a lot of the people in even Blackfoot South at the beginning were morphine addicts, which society set them up to be. They weren't criminal on purpose. They were addicts. So um, that's that's where her first uh, asylum 
uh, visit happened. Um, and then she uh, attempted suicide probably because of her addictions. Um, anyway, then she moved to Moscow. Um, she kept on her criminal ways and she had a wicked temper, everyone said. And she, um, oh boy. So when then they moved to Lewiston, they rented out their house. There was a prostitute um, who was also a colored woman, um, which was kind of scandalous at the time, mm -hmm. and um, her toddler named Henrietta. Um, she, so essentially her husband and the prostitute had a little, uh, you know, affair, because that's how it goes when you invite a prostitute into your house. <laughs> and um, Maggie was pissed. And so she plotted her revenge. She pretended to reconcile with her husband. Um, she talked Harvey into helping um, her adopt the two-year-old um, of the prostitute, Henrietta. Um, and her mom didn't consent at first, but um, they essentially blackmailed her and said, if you don't let us adopt the child, you won't be able to stay here. And as a colored prostitute in Idaho, where is she going to stay? That's craziness. Yeah. So it, it gets worse. So they adopt this child. Um, and within days, Maggie let everyone know because she's drunk and has a temper and can't keep a secret that she planned to poison Henrietta, then kill the mom, the prostitute and her husband and then kill herself. Nobody intervened. I don't know if they just thought it was her temper and she was just talking shit because that's what she did. Um, but on Sunday, February 10th of 1895, um, Maggie prepared a large dose of morphine for herself, meaning to kill herself. Um, and then she put it on the counter along with a glass of carbolic acid. Um, and it, that wasn't uncommon for people to commit suicide that way. They would take the morphine to numb it, and then they'd take the carbolic acid, which would eat away the this, mouth, esophagus, yeah, and the lungs. They, Just, oh, God. I mean, so that's kind of like what spies do, right? Is they take... Yeah. Oh. The, what are what do they take? It's it's a... No, the, it's like, like the, the pills that they all have on them. Mm -hmm. So if they get caught... It's like a quick... It's... Yeah, but it... It's pain. I wonder, like, is that what it is? I don't know, carbolic but it's acid? like... A, like death is really quick within just a couple of minutes, but it just, oh, I wonder if I can't, that's what it is. can't imagine that's painful. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. And that's why I don't think there's enough morphine in the world to numb it all. Because that would all happen before you die. Right. As a side, you know, yeah. it's not like, oh yeah, times were rough. So that's what she said she was preparing it for. She said she was going to, she had that prepared so she could kill herself. Gosh, though. She got distracted by something, and at that time, tragically, Henrietta had found and swallowed the morphine and then tipped over the acid, and um, it did kill her um, because it ate away her face and other details. So, mm. yeah, and of course, nobody believed Maggie's story because she previously had said and told everyone that she was planning on killing the child. Um, and while waiting trial, she suddenly went crazy, um, just wild all of a sudden she was insane. Um, and the sheriff thought she was just doing it for the insanity plea. Um, but she was charged with second degree murder and, um, they never did an autopsy on the child, even though she was horribly disfigured when they found the body. So, um, they were saying they couldn't prove it was poison. Um, <sighs> Yeah, but she did go to prison. That's when she ended up in the Idaho State Penitentiary. They called her Mad Margaret. So what year was this? This was... Does it say? That same year, 1895. Well, yeah. <laughs> there was no such thing as forensics really back then. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So um, she was... Um, um, she was in the penitentiary. She tried to commit suicide several times. She tried to eat glass... Um, but they don't think that actually happened. Um, so because she kept trying to commit suicide, that's when they moved her in July when the Blackfoot State South was first oh. built. So they sent her there to evaluate her. But once she got there, the doctor deemed her entirely sane. Do you think she was faking it? Oh, a hundred percent. Wait, wait for this. So, uh. 
Warden John Campbell, though, was determined to break her. He was like, no, she says she's acting entirely sane, but it's all a joke or she's faking it. So does that mean she's actually insane and she can manipulate and she's narcissistic? So they thought that if they put her in a room, a tight little windowless cell for Maggie, keeping her in isolation, she would uh, get better. She got worse. She got crazier. So they shipped her off to the insane asylum again because they had sent her back to the hospital because... They sent her back to the prison because the hospital deemed her sane, but keeping her in a tiny room literally drove her insane. So what happened? Yeah. So what happened after that is not entirely sh- certain. She was listed on the Blackfoot Asylum information card. It says delusions of grandeur and persecution, abnormally irritable. Um, oddly, the note also included the word abnormally irritable yeah abnormally say, irritable that's me you're like okay. any woman any irish woman <laughs> um yes so the note declared her dead so everyone thought she was dead but in 1906 so this was 10 years later an issue of the pendleton eastern or orgonian paper reported that her incinerated remains were discovered in the rubble of a burned residence where she had been working as a housekeeper yep. When, really? when or why she was released from the asylum, or if she actually was, is lost to history. And you can see, this, is, um, this isn't this is her state south, but this is the, because even though she was at the Blackfoot South Hospital, the penitentiary was still technically in charge of her. You can see her description of convict and her charges wow. and everything still, which is cool. But um, I found another um, article, and then I couldn't find it again in my history. But it did talk about how there was a lot of talk around town, how she escaped. And when she went to Oregon, everybody was super scared of her because she escaped from like this mental institution. And it sounds like she is nuts and criminally. She's criminally insane. Yeah. Yeah. And she was absolutely evil. I mean, she killed a toddler because she was jealous of her mother having an affair with her husband. But why? I mean, obviously, Blackfoot South tried to cover it up. Because they noted her dead, but there's. So do you think uh, that okay? This so there was a fire there. Uh, yes, at the so... penitent or the state mental hospital. Yes, the first year there was a fire. At that time, I think it was just one or two buildings. Yep, that completely destroyed it. So how many how many buildings are there? So now there's, I believe, seven, and I think they're building a new one. So there are there's. I actually have a map of it if I can find it. So you have people who were incinerated in the fire, obviously, because they did find at least two bodies. Yes, which again, did those were those bodies already dead? Because I mean, for oh example, yeah, I'm sure they have a morgue there, like a or a place. I mean, because people die in that big a hospital. Yeah. So as far as I understand, no, um, they do it just the way the hospital does now, which they keep them in the bed until the. Um, coroner can pick them up and take them to the funeral home but back then they would literally they would just wrap them in a sheet and bury my back oh that's right there's a cemetery there's, yep they built a new cemetery mm. um to try to commemorate um the people that had perished there there was hardly any death records at the time so i mean it really is like think about all the anguish all the people that died and nobody knew a lot of transient people people abandoned by their families because it was a social wrong to have a family member that was ill yeah. or mentally handicapped. Yeah, you just didn't talk about them. They didn't mm-hmm. exist anymore. You kind of have wiped them from your memory. Mm-hmm. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. That's it's just got a, terrible. Yeah, it's got a dark history. And they used to, um, there's an account online you can read about a nurse in the 60s. They would chain people to the walls. And this is the 60s. This isn't that long ago. Chain people to the walls. That's terrible. Punish them by not giving them food. <laughs> Um, I mean, and there's, you know, when I work dispatch, you would get some calls and it, to this day, there's still, you know, very, very mentally ill, um, patients and the quality of care just, I just don't think they have the trained staff, but there's also some spooky ghost stories. There's a ghost phone in the, yeah. Yeah. Oh, have wait, now this? I have heard this yes. from somebody who worked there. Yes, there is. So when <gasps> I worked at dispatch for a short period of time. Oh, maybe it was from you. Maybe it was. Yes. There's a ghost phone. 
and you will get phone calls from, um, you get phone calls from the state hospital anyway, because the patients are allowed access to a phone. Sometimes they'll call and they're kind of paranoid and they'll be like, the nurse is drugging me. And so you just kind of talk to them until the nurse comes and says, Hey, everything's okay. But there is a phone, um, a phone number to a room. And to this day, there's no, there's no phone in there. There's no phone jack. There's no, this room isn't even used anymore, but you'll still get phone calls from that room. And it's just white noise on the other end. Yeah. It's creepy. That is spooky. Isn't that eerie? So how many patients does Blackfoot South hold? They hold a hundred. Have... Yes. Um, they have 60, I think they have like 10 or 12, like juvenile beds, 30 adult beds. And then I think total it's like a hundred. Um, it's not very large, which is very unfortunate because there's a really high need for it. But unless you've attempted to commit suicide, they can't admit you because they don't have room. Considering how many state hospitals do we have in Idaho? Uh, three. We Consider, have... Yeah, three. So mm -hmm. let's say at the outmost we have 600 beds. If that... That's not enough. No, it's not. It's, it's a it's I mean, a Idaho issue. is a pretty small state. For those of you who are, have never been here, mm -hmm. um, Idaho, like the whole state population... The, just to give you an idea, Sac the city of Sacramento, not the county, but the city of Sacramento, I think is four times bigger than the state of Idaho mm -hmm. with population. We don't have a big population, but no. we still have need. And <clears throat> we have a high need because we deal with a lot of drugs. We deal yeah. a lot with a lot of poverty. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we have a need for state hospitals and we have a need for prisons because they let everybody out here on what they call a writer. A writer is where uh, somebody, they really don't, they don't have space for them in prison or in jail. So mm -hmm. they basically give you a slap on the hand and say, be a good person and go do whatever classes we tell you to do. And then if you don't do them, we'll send you to prison, but they don't. And so we have really violent offenders here mm -hmm. that, and pedophiles and everything else. And they never do any time because all of our judges and our DAs will let them go on a rider. And it's because we don't have any space. And it's also terrible. money. It costs so much more to go through charging people and charging people. people. Yeah. yeah. And housing and... them and feeding them. And we don't, if we had, and, and I'm not an advocate for having a whole lot of prisons, but there are violent offenders and people who harm children. And that's just me, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying these these people need they need we need places we need more we need more and mm -hmm. and um mental health you know we all saw it with covid mm -hmm. mental health issues skyrocketed because mm -hmm. they told us to not see anybody well humans need connection mm -hmm. you need the connection to your family or your friends mm -hmm. and i mean i'm a loner but i still need the connection with those few friends that i maintain my tight circle if you don't have that connection, you, you, your mental health just plummets. Mm -hmm. And we saw that a lot too, even with places like this, not being already being, I hate the term locked up, but that's what it feels like. They don't really have a lot of freedoms or a lot of things to do. And then not having visitors on top of that, there were a lot of, a lot of deaths in skilled nursing and geriatric mental health facilities because of that. Mm -hmm. And um, here's here's the information. Um, they do have 90 adult psych beds, 16 adolescent beds, and 29 skilled nursing, which that's is like geriatric much. patients. And that's... That's not very much. No, and no memory care here, hardly. So right. people that need memory care often end up in a high, you know, an area like this that's like high security when it's not necessary, but there's nowhere else. Yeah, we have a few places in Pocatello. In memory care is, the um, say grandma has dementia or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. um, dementia patients usually cannot be put into a, a senior facility, a normal senior facility because they'll leave. And mm -hmm. then they're found wandering the streets. And mm -hmm. so they need to be in a locked facility, but they still are able to wander the halls and they have, you mm -hmm. know, Mm -hmm. uh, and something like this, they're probably locked in their rooms a lot. They and are. that's terrible. They are. Yep. And it, it really is. It's, um, I have a friend, um, who was a CNA there for a very long time. And she says it's essentially glorified prison Ugh. because there's so many safety concerns. We had a guy come into the hospital from there. He had swallowed like 
a stapler and a letter opener and <sighs> like a light bulb, like all of these things. And it's like, I mean, what do you do? Mm. You know, but it's. So the, the paranormal side of Blackfoot South, mm -hmm. then you think is connected to the, um, the fires, definitely the fires. And then the loss of the people who live there. And or, I mean, I just think patients. that's the terrible treatment because most of the time in those opening, uh, I think the first four or five years, like I said, people would just abandon their family members. So you're miserable in life and you're going to be miserable in death. Nobody was there to bury you. They rolled them in a sheet. I mean, that was That's it. Like terrible. It is terrible. And, and then, you know, what you were talking about is the late 1800s, even mm -hmm. early 1900s, right? When you had a family member who was mm -hmm. placed there, probably just because she was an independent gal and she mm -hmm. didn't, she didn't conform. She was hysterical. She was hysterical. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to live their whole life in mm -hmm. a blocked facility Mm -hmm. without experience any freedom again because they didn't conform mm -hmm. now society revels in non-conformists i mean that's like woohoo everybody's a non-conformist now which is in a sense conforming mm -hmm. but still mm -hmm. it's what a terrible thing to have to experience yeah. so no doubt the there's place. there's um activity there so tim yes. was saying that he had experiences in the cemetery mm -hmm. and a, like a light or something or mm -hmm. people have experienced up there yeah uh huh. Especially... now is that cemetery open to walk around yes i was just gonna say i'd love to go and see if anybody ever did a headstone for um because what they did is they didn't really have, obviously have bodies but they they raised money for headstones for all of the records of people that had died there that they could find mm. Um, and I'd love to see if maggie hardy is there because they claimed that she died i don't think she died there i think she dipped um, and I think she did die in a house fire in Oregon or maybe ran away and who knows where she went, but I kind of wonder if somebody ever did anything for her there, wow. even though she's in, kind of an evil person. She went a little crazy. Yeah. But... I mean, you know, you don't, yeah, she, she's pretty evil, but it'd be interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. We should go. It's, I know I want, you know, I'm not a, to go I'm not a big fan of going to cemeteries because I don't think a lot of people will hang around in a cemetery, but a place like that where they're lost. Yeah. So many people, the souls are lost already and they mm -hmm. don't have a connection with their family. And That's those the instances only place that they can hang around, right? Where else mm -hmm. are you going to go? Mm -hmm. So I've run into a few nurses that have worked at Blackfoot South and they're, they've had experiences and they've told me stories and yeah. Mm -hmm. Ghost phone. Ghost, Ghost phone. phone. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing the, the story, Katie. That's Absolutely. nuts. Pretty interesting, huh? Have you worked at Blackfoot South? Have do you have anybody? Do you know yes. anybody's been there and they've had experiences? We would like to know. Yeah. Hit us up on Pocatello Paranormal Facebook on our Pocatello Paranormal Research on Facebook and let us, us know all your stories. Gosh. We'd love to share them and hear them. Or do you want to be in our podcast and let yes. us know? We'll do that too. Yep. Listener tales. Yes, listener tales, definitely. Well, thanks. Do you have anything else? Do you think that was State it? State hospital. We we could go on. I think I think this might need to be a running series because okay. there really is so much. Well, we can do There's more. So much. So we can do more. Definitely. Yeah, if you want to hear more about State Hospital, tune let in. Us know. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is Colleen with Speaking of Spirits, and we'll catch you next time. You've been listening to Speaking of Spirits, powered by Pocatello Paranormal Research in Pocatello, Idaho. Thank you for joining us today. We're glad you could be here. If you're enjoying the podcast, please do us a favor and go to whatever platform you are listening to the podcast on and give us a review. We prefer the five-star reviews. This helps us know how we're doing, and it helps others to find the podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you on our next podcast.